Reina and I went to the same high school together. We were on the same softball team together. We moved to Utah together. She is one of my best friends. She met Morris in 2008 and fell in love. They got married and in 2012, their lives changed forever. Boy, they received the greatest boy, no, blessing no. from heaven. You Paco, this is his story. Run like you bulletproof and total a car or two. Boy, What's your name? You're gonna hate Papa. this town. What's your name? What's about you can burn it What's down. That fire yeah. in your eyes is 20 counties wide. But boy, you're gonna <laughs> lose <laughs> it. Yeah. 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 yeah, say bye. You do yeah. some stupid they love you. things. You bye. are the kind of kids that yeah, throw a punch and yeah. hurl up way too fast. You're gonna drop the ball, hit the wall, and break some hearts like glass. I know you will. The idea to change that I wanted to raise awareness to you know close family members and I wanted to send something out. The whole autism awareness they have a saying that goes um Different not less, right? Is that the hashtag they use? Yes. Different not less. So I googled different and divergent was one of the words that popped up. And it actually means, um, wait, what did it mean again? <laughs> so um, anyways, tell us a little bit about Paka. How old was Paka when he started showing symptoms of autism? So we really didn't know it was autism at first. We, we knew, so my brother and my sister, they had a child same time around Paka. They were three months behind Paka. So when they turned, all of them turned one, I noticed they were a little bit more ahead of Paka. They were, you know, they were speaking sentences and, you know, having conversations with their parents. And some of them, I could even talk to them over the phone. Where Paka, he didn't really make or say very much words. I think when I spoke to his pediatrician, he, his words were, he had maybe up to 10 words he could say. And so... And a lot of it, he was making a lot of sounds and humming. And so at that point, we, you know, we kind of let it go. We didn't think of anything. So it wasn't really until he was two years old and we took him to his two-year-old checkup. And, you know, we mentioned again, like, you know, something's definitely different about him. You know, he's, he's not playing with toys a certain way or how they should be. And he, he seriously wasn't talking at all, just sounds and one word here and there. And we noticed a little bit of, um, I don't want to say tantrums, but different attitude changes. So that's when they recommended um, a program called DDI. And it's a, they have someone come over once a week and um, play with him, talk to him, kind of teach him how to play with certain toys. So we started off that way. And then when he turned three years old, um, we had a little assessment, and they noticed that, you know, it looks like he's, he was three years old, but he's, he was maybe a year and a half behind with his development. So he was three years old, but a one and a half yes. year old um, yes. brain or yes. something like that. And it was different things because, you know, yes, he was okay with eye contact. He interacted, but maybe with playing with toys or different social skills, he Just wasn't some passing. of these things. Yeah, so good. there was a bunch of different things that um, he um, didn't understand or, you know, wasn't covering at his age. Mm -hmm. So from then, they, at three years old, that's when they recommend him a preschool. And we were fortunate where, you know, preschool can cost a lot, um, especially when uh, my husband and I, we both work. And so when, when you have two parents that work full time, you don't have a lot of programs that are available that can be free. How old was Paco when he was diagnosed? Like? So he was diagnosed at the age of, I want to say four, like right before he turned five, but I know it was officially four. Okay. Um, is it, is it? Easy to tell people that your son has autism, like when you go out to public, or how often do you go out? Do you avoid it? What? Well, I never really said he had autism before he turned four. Like I know I would say it to like my close friends and my family because it wasn't scientifically diagnosed. Mm -hmm.
Well, it is hard going in public. It has become easier now that he's older and me and my husband has adapted to his ways. Because every autistic child is different. Some kids can't even, they have, so what Paka has is sensory problems. And what sensory problems is, is when he goes out in public, it's hard to focus. So, for example, you go to a carnival, you see things individual, right? You see the merry-go-round, you see all the, the slides. But for my son... And a lot of autistic children, they see everything all at once. So their mind goes crazy. They don't know how to um, focus, put, yeah, focus and put their attention to one thing. So sometimes it's hard for him where his mind is going crazy and he wants to go to here, here, here all at once. And so making it go in public, it can be difficult. But like I said, it's gotten easier. So we, we just make sure we're always on our feet. My husband will be my daughter and I'll make sure I stay with Papa. Right. So... One of the, I'm trying to think of a story. That well, now that you on. brought up a carnival, I was there when we went to the carnival, remember? At the, in Lehigh. Oh, the so, carnival. Okay, yeah. Yes. So, how old is Kai? Kai is three. Three, okay. and Paka is five. five. So, we're all at the carnival, and um, I'm fifth wheeling every time. But we're in the corn maze. It's dark. There's tons of people everywhere. And all of a sudden, he just <laughs> blitz out like not even in the lane of the maze he just runs past his, the bushes and everything and he just gone and i was like so scared that we're gonna lose him reyna drops everything in heels weren't you wearing heels no i was wearing boots oh okay well anyways <laughs> trying to make it more dramatic um she runs and like runs after him. he's fast and then we have kai yeah so i it's like when i go out in public i don't expect him to be on his best behavior I don't expect it to stay in one place. Um, me and my husband always say we always stay on our toes or our feet, and we make sure you know we we have to be extra careful and watch him all the time. One thing, um, I can cut this out if you don't want to share it, but you we had a leash for him when yes. we, when we traveled home. Um, did you feel weird using it? No, at the time, no. I know if you asked me before I had Paka, I I probably would be one of those that would judge a parent. Yes, of thinking because why would you put a, why would you put a leash on a child? They're a child. They're not a pet. Mm -hmm. But after you go through some of the things I went through, you just like feel like you're gonna lose him. Yeah, of course that's scary, and like not knowing, I think that's huge. You know. Um, so when I first found out, I don't even know when you told me that he had autism. But the first thing that came to mind is like the well-being of you. You know, like, oh my gosh, that's a lot to take on, you know? Yeah. I feel like, I just like, man, I can not only imagine. But like, I feel like you're doing such a good job at raising both of them. You know, you have so much patience and, you know, it takes, I know it takes a lot. But I don't know, everybody always say, like, I don't know how you do it right now. It's definitely yeah. patience. After after a couple of times I go through trials with Paka, it gets easier. And I no longer, before a lot of it had to do with, I would care what people would think. You know, people staring, people making judgmental comments about my son. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we were in a bad place, you know. We would get mad and sometimes we would lash out on people. Which is not healthy for me as a parent. I don't want to be that parent that's, you know, acting out of character. I want my kids to look up to me, not be scared of me. For sure, for sure. I don't know. Yeah, they're the same. It's just they have different ways of thinking and doing things. And as parents, as supporters, you know, we kind of have to just be patient. And I don't think I ever had this much patience in my life. So, <laughs> for real? Yeah, so I think I've gotten a lot better. Having Paka, it's definitely humbled me and made me a better person. And What? Or in denial yeah. or something, and I don't it's know. funny that you say that because I actually have a lot of parents or people I know that will ask me wondering because they have a child and they're wondering like, oh, I'm noticing some things like, you know, what should I do about it? And so I always recommend always seek help because when you're a parent, you don't want to know that your, your child might have a disability or you don't want to know that they're having difficulties in learning things. And so sometimes as a parent, you don't want to <coughs> get that help. You kind of want to try and help your help them yourself mm -hmm. and so I would advise that you know go seek help from your pediatrician get a, a second opinion if you're not happy with that because you know 
even doctors and professional mm. medical people, they, they don't know as well. Because mm. autism is a, a big spectrum. And yeah. So seek help from your pediatrician. Seek help from others. Um, join support groups. Support groups is huge. Yes. Don't you have one like every twice a month or something? Yeah, so I'm a part of a bunch on Facebook. I try to stay active in that for... Not just for Paco, for myself, for yes. my well-being. Like, I need that support from other mothers. Yes. So I'm one of them that I'm really proud of is the Polynesian, it's called Polynesian Autism. And it's just a Utah-based Facebook. And I think we have a bunch of other um, parents that are all around the world. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just a support group. We meet right. up once a month, um, just sharing stories. Some, some parents awesome. have kids that have... Um, older kids and newly parents with um, kids they just found out so it's good to kind of exchange information yeah yeah for sure I think that's also like they say a wise man learns from other people's mistakes like mm -hmm. maybe they can give you pointers on like what stores not to go to what what's autism friendly like I'm sure that you found out a lot of places yeah like that ice cream place you went to like you know yeah that's, so, that's okay. um, and then it's also like having a peace of mind knowing you're not the only parent going through all these different, different things with your child, so. If you have any questions, um, go follow her Instagram page, Raising Divergent. Um, we'll also add it to the end of this video. Um, want to give a shout out to C4 Designs for sponsoring this. There it is, C4. Um, also want to give a shout out to Polynesian, what? Autism Facebook. Polynesian Facebook. Autism Ooh. Facebook. Um, there's a lot of uh, companies out here in Utah. I don't know because they said like it's they have high autism. Yeah, so Utah has one of the highest percentage of all um, pe children with autism. I think I don't really really know the numbers, but just in general, I think it's one out of eighteen mm -hmm. children will be diagnosed. And I think with boys, it's a little more. I think it's one out of ten. I might be wrong on the boy part, but yeah. So we're um, we've we've attended a lot of activities to support yes. autism. We did a few, three, how many case? <laughs> we we do um, we've done five case, ten five case, five case. Uh, we've done little. For me, I did a little service project where I just hand out information to people. Yeah, you did the work. rice crispy yeah, thing at work. Or any kind of um, what else did we do? Just we did a lot of meetups this year, and and one of what we did last week was the UVU hosts a. It's called the balloon launch and we have a bunch of vendors, a bunch of families that come out and provide games for children with disabilities. So, that was nice. fun. So if you are out there and you're wondering if your kids have that, um, definitely go seek some help. Yes. Yeah. See your local pediatrician, start from there, um, do your research because it's not going to come to you. As parents, things are not just going to be handed to us on the doorstep. Yeah, boy, you gonna be so stubborn. You get that from your mother. I already see it now. You weren't built for backing down. Boy, there'll be a small town night. You'll fall from your sky blue eyes. When she's in your hands, you'll think you're a man and not a boy. She'll make you lose your mind. Uncle boy. Hi. Fuck up. Hi, you're gonna drive and kiss and 